Hello, everyone. Uh, good to, uh, uh, well, I don't guess see you yet, but uh, thank you for joining in. We do we love you and appreciate you and so thankful for you. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness to uh, attend these services online each week. Uh, we really do appreciate you and, and your loyalty. And may God bless you and continue to keep you safe and healthy. And again, we are praying for you. And if we can uh, minister to you or help you in any way, we do desire to serve you. So any way we can help you out, please let us know. But hope you and your family are doing well. And hope that your uh, uh, these uh, services are encouraging you and helping you and helping your walk uh, grow stronger with, with God each day. And so thank you so much for joining us. I would like to mention a few announcements. <clears throat> uh, don't forget... On Sunday, May 31st, from 2 to 3, will be a drive through baby shower for Justin and Bailey Collins. Uh, they will be having a girl, uh, Blakely Redden. Uh, they are registered at Target and Amazon. And so don't forget about that on uh, Sunday, May the 31st. Uh, and also, <clears throat> uh, this coming Sunday, uh, the 24th, we are starting our uh, service is back uh, live here at uh, church and so we'd love for you to join us uh, the service will be at nine o'clock and so uh, we'd love for you to come if you still feel uncomfortable uh, that is okay as well uh, you can still see the services online uh, but we uh, if you can come we'd love for you to come sunday but we do need you to please uh, either through uh, Facebook or, or calling the church. Uh, will you please let us know uh, how many uh, will be coming with you Sunday uh, so that we can uh, be prepared. Uh, we have about a maximum of 200 that will fit in the sanctuary, and then we're working on an overflow room if need be. Uh, and so if you wouldn't mind letting us know if you'll be here Sunday, uh, we would uh, surely appreciate that. But thank you so much. We uh, are looking forward to seeing you. Uh, and also, if you would like to come by uh, Sunday or next week to pick up uh, Sunday school material, uh, you can, uh, can do that as well. They'll be in the Sunday school rooms, uh, so don't forget about uh, that. But we do love you and appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining in. May God bless you um, and give you a wonderful experience. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your love and your compassion. Thank you for uh, your forgiveness and your hope. Thank you for who you are and for what you do for us. Thank you for always being with us. And we, we love you. And help us love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Help us stay focused on you. And help us seek you and your wisdom. Lord, continue to be with each one. Continue to let them know that you love them and that they are very valuable to you. Continue to keep each one safe and healthy. Uh, please protect them and provide for them. And continue to do your amazing work in their lives and in their midst. I just pray, Lord, that you'll minister to them in a powerful way. Lord, grant them what they need from you and help us all experience you and share your love with those around us. Lord, thank you for how you bless us and use us to bless others. Lord, be with uh, Miss Gail. Please be with uh, Brother Doug and please be with Brother Scott as they... Uh, lead us in worshiping you, Father. Please bless them and uh, use them in a powerful way. Help us be obedient. Help us always honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us tonight. Jesus' blood is full of great power. It's full of the power to uh, provide us with salvation is full of power to help us live the Christian life every day. And so we're going to sing, There is Power in the Blood. Would you be wider, but 
much whiter than snow. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service? Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. so much. Our next song uh, is a simple thank you to the Lord for the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord for being willing to go to the cross and die for us, for our sins while we were still sinners. He died for us. So we're going to sing, thank you Lord for saving my soul. Thank you Lord for making me whole. Thank you Lord for giving to me Thy great salvation, so rich and free. singing. Good Wednesday evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us online. On Wednesdays we've been making our way through the book of 1 John. So if you have a, a copy of God's Word, I'm going to invite you to turn with me to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading in a moment in verse 11. We're thinking about this thought tonight, love or death, love or death. Now John's letter has been compared to a spiral staircase because he kept returning to the same themes. Those themes are love, obedience, and truth. Even though these three themes recur, it's not that they are merely repetitious. Each time we return to one of these three themes, we look at it from a different point of view and we go a little bit deeper into that subject. Now we've already talked about how important it is that we love other believers, the brethren. We talked about that back in 1 John chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. 
But back in chapter 2, the emphasis was on our fellowship. In other words, if we have fellowship with God, we will love other believers. If we're walking in the light, we will love one another. Uh, but in our present section, the emphasis is on his relationship with other believers because we've been born of God. Christians love one another because they've been born of God, which makes them all brothers and sisters in Christ. So obedience and love are both evidences of sonship and brotherhood. We have been reminded that a true child of God practices righteousness. And now we look into the matter of love for the brethren. And that's, that's really beginning in verse 11 of chapter 3. This truth is first stated in the negative. So I want you to look at verse 10 of 1 John 3. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. So this truth is stated in the negative. Now when it comes to this matter of love, there are four possible levels on which we can live, okay? On which a person can live. So I'm going to give you four levels, and you're going to see that two of these are, are anti-Christian, and one uh, is questionable, and only the fourth really uh, should be a part of the, the life of a Christian, all right? So let's take a look at four levels on which we can live. And remember, the emphasis, the encouragement here is that you and I love one another because we have been born of God, okay? First level on which a person can live with another person is the level of murder, okay? I know, man, that's pretty extreme. So if you'll take a look there at your Bibles, 1 John 3, verses 11 and 12. Look at what John says. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Now, murder is the lowest level on which one may live in relationship to someone else. It's the level that Satan lives on. The devil was, the Bible says he was a murderer from the beginning, but we have heard as Christians from the beginning of our salvation that we are to love one another. Uh, in fact, John talks about that in verse 11. He says, go back to the beginning. If our spiritual experience originates with God the Father, then we must love one another. But if it originates with Satan, we will hate one another. 1 John 2.24 says, Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. So I want you to notice what John does. He gives us an example of living on the level of murder. And unfortunately, Cain is that example. He is a lot, an example of a life of hatred. If you were to go back and read Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 16, you will find the account of Cain and his dealings with his brother Abel. Now think about this. Cain and Abel had the same parents. They, brought, they both brought sacrifices to God. Cain is not presented as an atheist. He is presented as a worshiper. And this is the point. Children of the devil masquerade as true believers. They attend religious gatherings, as Cain did. They may bring offerings, but these actions in and of themselves are not valid proof that a man is born of God. The real test is his love for the brethren, and it is in this area that Cain failed. Now, we know that every man has a spiritual lineage as well as a physical lineage. The Bible indicates that Cain was of his spiritual father, the devil. Now that doesn't mean, of course, that Satan literally fathered Cain. 
It means rather that Cain's attitudes and actions originated with his spiritual father who was the devil. Cain was a murderer and a liar, just like Satan. He murdered his brother Abel, and then he lied about what he had done. In Genesis 4, 9, the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? And he said, I know not. So not only did he kill his brother, but then he lied about what he had done. In contrast to this, so this, in contrast, this is what we're to do as children of God. God is love and truth. And so if you belong to God, then you're going to practice love and truth. Cain's attitude represents the attitude of the present world system. The world hates Christ for the same reason. Cain hated Abel. Christ shows up the world's sin and reveals its true nature. When the world, like Cain, comes face to face with reality and truth, it has to make one of two decisions. It either has to repent and change or destroy the one who exposes it. Satan, the Bible says, is the prince of this world, and he controls the world through murder and lies. So I want you to know it would be a terrible thing to live on this lowest level, as Cain did. Reminds me of a story I heard about a hunter who uh, had to take refuge in a cave during a, a bad storm. And after he dried out for a little bit, he decided that he would investigate his temporary home. And so he turned on his flashlight and he was looking around the cave and he discovered that he was in that cave with spiders and lizards and snakes. You want to know what he did? He got out of that cave back in the rain. If the unsaved world could only see it would realize that it's living on the low level of murder and lies, surrounded by that old serpent Satan and all of his demonic armies. Like Cain, the people of the world try to cover up their true nature with religious activity, but they lack faith in God's word. If you continue to live on this low level of murder, you will eventually be cast out into outer darkness with Satan and you will suffer apart from God forever. So the first level that we could live on, it's not what we want to live on, not what we should live on, is the level of murder. But I want you to notice John identifies a second level and that is the level of hatred. Now if you have your Bibles there, I want you to look at verses 13 through 15. 13 through 15, the Bible says, Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. So there's your second level, is the level of hate. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, Brother Scott, I, I've never murdered anyone before. And you know what God would say to that? He would say, yes, but remember that hatred is the same as murder for the Christian. The only difference between level one and level two is the outward act of taking life. The inward intent is the same. I remember hearing the story one time of a person who went to the zoo and they were watching the lions. And so he actually approached the zookeeper and he said, I have a cat at home. And he says, your lions act just like my cat. Look how they're sleeping so peacefully. It seems a shame that you have to keep these beautiful animals behind bars. The zookeeper said, my friend, these Animals may look like your cat, but their disposition is radically different. There is murder in their hearts. You better be glad the bars are there. You know, the only reason that some people have never actually murdered anyone is because the bars 
that have been put up. The fear of arrest or shame, the penalties of the law, and the possibility of death. But we're going to be judged by the law of liberty, says James 2.12. The question is not so much, what did you do, but what did you want to do? What would you have done if you had been at liberty to do what you pleased? You know, that's why Jesus equated hatred with murder in Matthew 5, 21 through 26. He equated lust with adultery in Matthew 5, 27 through 30. So what would you have done if you would have had the liberty to do what you wanted to do? Now, this does not mean that hatred in the heart does the same amount of damage or involves the same degree of guilt as actual murder. I can promise you that your neighbor would rather you hate him than murder him. But in God's sight, hatred is the moral equivalent of murder. And if you allow hatred to be unbridled, it can lead you to murder. A Christian has passed from death to life, and the proof of this is that he loves the brethren. When, when that Christian belonged to the world system, he hated God's people. But now that he belongs to God, he loves them. These verses, verses 14 and 15, are like those that deal with the habitual sin of a believer. A, a settled habit of life. And so a believer that is in the practice of loving the brethren, even though on occasion he may get angry with his brother. That's what John is teaching. He's not teaching that you won't ever be angry because those of you that are married, you know that from time to time we may get angry with your spouse. So he's not teaching that we never get angry, but he's talking about the normal bent of our life. Um, we ought to love the brethren, all right? So two levels that we've talked about tonight, and both of these are unacceptable for the believer. The first level, the lowest level, is murder. The second level is hatred. Both of these are unacceptable for the child of God. And you say, why is that? Because we are in fellowship with God, and we have been born with God, and because both of those are true, we should love one another. Now, does that mean it's always easy to love one another? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that it's easy. But that should be the normal disposition of our lives. And I pray that if that's not your normal disposition, if love is not your normal disposition, then I pray that you'd let Jesus change your heart. You think about that. And let's pray. Father, thank you so much for uh, your word and for what it teaches us about how we are to love one another. God, forgive us when we haven't loved the brethren. God, teach us how to love one another even though we don't always agree with one another. And God, thank you for this truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us online tonight. I want to remind you that we will begin services at Bay Springs Baptist Church this Sunday at 9 a.m. We are asking you to RSVP if you're planning on coming. And we're sure looking forward to seeing you. And we'll see you Sunday. Thank you.